Okay, so we now have a very, the, the one word to describe time before time, Ryan, go. Confusing? You thought it was confusing. That's, that's not the right word. All right, who wrote this? We have uh, Declan. Declan Shalvey and Shelby. Rory McConville. Yeah, it's it's like, like a, a writing duo. Duo team up and artist Joe Palmer. I also want to give special credit. Do it. To colorist Chris O'Halloran. Chris freaking O'Halloran. Every single person should know who that is because every single person should be reading the masterpiece that is Ice Cream Man. Same colorist. Same colorist. Keep that in mind while we're flipping through some sample images from time before time and you might notice like I did. I also really like the letterer in this book, Hassan Atzmain Alao. I assume that's how you pronounce his last name. Sorry oh, if that's yeah. wrong. But he does really good work with the letters in this book, and I have been making a conscious effort to kind of try and dig deeper into comics that I'm reading and go beyond writing and penciling and appreciate the colorist and even the letterer sometimes when there's there's just so much. Go- it's a team effort, and there's there's always something to appreciate in comics, and that's kind of why I love them. This is a story about time travel, and it's wacky. There's not a, a whole lot that I want to describe for to the community because there's it's just a lot of fun. It's one of those situations where some comic books are just a work of art because it's just like literature translated to funny books. Yes, that make like it award winning and like important. Yeah, just you know, you have your Watchmen's, you know, you have your Dark Knight Returns. We have a book we're about to talk about on this list that is. It's good. It may may make our list, you know, among amongst those greats. We're gonna get to it. This particular comic book is what makes comics fun. It's just wacky ideas. Some ideas that you may like kind of go, you know what? That doesn't make sense. Like, how would that work? And then the answer is comic books. Comic books, right? So we have That needs to be on the soundboard. Comic books. Just comic books. There we go. We have uh, a character, a lead character. His name is Tetsuo. Tetsuo, that's right. And he works for a company that specializes, or a group, I don't even know, it's a it's business. A, it's a crime family, crime or like syndicate? an organization. Yeah, they're called the Syndicate, and they're just a, a, they're an organized crime group. But well, they're, they kind of specialize in, this book is invol- involves time travel, and I guess this illegal crime family operates by transporting objects and people from various time periods for money. That's right. So if you are, I mean, this is based in, Right now, 1987, but they traveled from the future because they're transporting this family to a different time and place. Right. And the first thing you see here is the kid going, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password? And he says, uh, kid, Wi-Fi isn't going to be invented for another 10 years. Ouch. Yeah. And then he gets the benefit of getting to leave. But this kid like blows up and he gets really mad with, with his mom. I don't know if you got the next page on there. No, I did not get the next page. We're not going to spoil everything. They get in a but, fight. It's funny. But no, most of this takes place in the future in 2140. And this is a world where a lot of people don't want to be in. This is basically the present day of this book. If you can consider any time period in a time travel story present day. They do a lot of jumping around. But 2140 is kind of like the, the home time period. That's right. Can you zoom in on, the, on those letters right there for me? There's letters. Oh, right down here? No, no, no. The ones above. The blue one. There we go. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, Look at that. Yeah, this is something you're going to see. This letter work is so damn cool. It's like graffiti art. It's like in the world. Like, like those are three-dimensional letters right there. Yeah, I really enjoy that. You're going to see that a lot throughout this comic book. Um, Also, okay, you have Ice Cream Man because of the colorist. Okay, of course. You also got Mignola vibes. There's a lot. Like, I didn't catch that until you pointed it out, but duh. Like, obviously. Dude, this is, look at these characters, man. Like, the negative space is is exactly what it needs to be. You know, there's not even detail on this person's face because it don't need it. And that's that's how you know you're dealing with an artist who knows what they're doing. So, this right here is funny. It's also very thought-provoking. Because what if you could travel to different parts of the timeline Without affecting time. That's a whole thing right. about this where they just kind of breeze past. It's like, it doesn't matter, you know? That's, that's a huge sticking point in any time travel story. Like, well, you can't make sure, make sure you don't talk to anybody, otherwise you'll completely destroy the whole space-time continuum. Right. But they just breeze right past that in this comic, and they're like, you, everything's already happened. Don't worry about it. You, you're not that important. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, no, no, no. It's more about the ability to go through time, and we're talking about the character who his job is to make that a reality for people. Whether it's good people trying to escape or bad people trying to es- escape as well. Escape, you know? Like the law, escape justice. Yeah, hey, you know, they're, they're trying to 
put me on all these I murder charges. This page here. These two guys that we just saw on the last page, uh, Tetsuo and his friend Oscar, are both workers for this crime syndicate, and they are pretty depressed. I mean, they live in a very, very bad time. Like, there's all this doom and gloom. All these newspaper articles you can see in the background. Global GDP expected to drop by eight percent. There's all these homeless people around. Right. Hurricanes. It's just a, it's just a bad time to live in. It's a bad world, and nobody's happy, and that's why there's so many people desperate to like escape into the past. So they kind of formulate a plan. That's right. They formulate a plan. They want to uh, jack one of these. They do one of the time machines and time escape machines. on their own. Yeah. That's right. They want to get one of the time machines and go to a different place and see if they can get away with it, not be tracked, not be traced, and start a new life. And yeah, our, our lead is like, eh, I'm not too sure about it, but his, his friend's definitely trying to convince them. Now, they have jobs they have to do. They're constantly being told, you need to go into the future to do this. You got to go into the past to do this. And when doing so, so, we get to see, and I think this is probably my favorite part of the comic, is that there's so much time travel happening. You'll be in one year at one point and then another year on the next page. And you're seeing different times within the world and what they're experiencing, what it looks like in the far future, what it looks like in the past. And pretty much the further you go, the worse it gets. Right? Yeah, there's a scene in this book where they go into like the 3000s and it's just like a green radiated wasteland and it, it's like, it's not good. So the friend and him, they're, they're looking, you know, well, let's just, let's give them a, a brief, brief rundown because I think this one right here is one that you really got to just jump on because it's such a good time. These two gentlemen want to get out, but one's not really sure. The one that wants to get out does one more job, but he gets trapped. He gets trapped goes, in the future. It goes sideways. Yeah, he gets like arrested. He gets drafted into some kind of war against bugs, like Starship Trooper status, and just like he ends up spending like his entire life trapped in the future. That's right. And we see this party. We're introduced to a party because he's arrived back. This all happens in like a couple pages. In our current day, this happens in one day. This is one day one to the day. next. Yeah. His, his best friend who's about to just like jump he's ship gone, with he's him. Gone, he's gone to do a quick job in the future. And then they come back to this party, this homecoming party. And this party is for him coming back home. And unfortunately, this friend is an old man now. One day later, and he's just like dying in this wheelchair. That's right. So this, this company, this crime syndicate, this right here is what they'll let their employees go through, essentially. They'll let them waste their entire lives. You know, you, go, you get stuck in the wrong timeline. Eh, you know, it's really expensive to get you. So just, you know, try to fend for yourself. We'll get to you eventually. And unfortunately, this gentleman, they got to him really late. So yeah. this is what pushes our main protagonist over the edge. I got to get out. This right here. I don't want to end up like my friend who yeah, wanted now, this more than I did. And now he can't come back with him. He, like, he's, he's basically stuck on his own. So he just decides to like, screw it. I'm just going to steal one of these time machines by myself and make a go for it. So in trying to steal one of the time machines, this is what the time machines look like. They're, They're ugly. Cool. I kind of love that. They're just boxes. Yeah, they, they figured it out, you know, and this is an older model. There's different models of time machines. You're going to yeah. see them. Um, but in the quest to try and leave, he gets ambushed by an FBI agent. The FBI agent causes a fight out to occur. You know, this is something that they're not supposed to do. They're trying to steal this from some other nefarious individuals. And this is where you get to see our second lead character. And she has her own reasons for trying to go back in time as well. Now, because this fight has ensued, which, by the way, let's go right back to the word bubbles. Let's go right back to the sound effects. Oh, that's so Mignola right there, too. Those uh, people, those it's figures. It's so Mignola, and also, I, I, I hope, I, mean, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to give credit to the colorist here. I'm assuming he's the one who's deciding the color of the word bubbles, too, or the, or the text, Yeah, rather. Definitely makes a difference because choosing this to be, uh, this is so Mignola. Look at this one panel. I love it, dude. That may be my, one of my biases here. I was going to tell you, comic fam, anytime you got that Mignola channel, like, focused in, honing in, I can't help but love it. Okay, but because the fire, uh, the gunfire, and, and then the ruckus that's happening, stuff gets jumbled, and they get placed in who I think knows it's the future, where. yeah, but the, they, they do a really cool job of showing you throughout the book all these years, like 1987 at the beginning. You get used to the pattern. Like, you see a weird time. You, you get used to what year it is because they tell you. But here you're in a weird time, and it's like, mm. Where do they go? Something 63 is what it looks like. That's right, and it's because stuff went south, and now they got to figure out where they're going to go. Are they going to be able to go back? Do they even want to go back? They really don't. 
but do they want to stay there? Comic fam, read this book time before time. It issue, is worth it. Every issue eight drops book. this week too, so it's still relatively early on in the run. It's a it's a really fun book from Image that I have liked for a while since the beginning.